This chapter starts by introducing the transactions and asset demand for money and explaining how the interaction of the demand and supply of money determine the interest rates in the market. Banks' balance sheets are used to explain how open market operations is effective in changing the money supply. In Part 2, we will learn about tools other than open market operations that the Fed might use to manipulate the money supply and the reasons that these tools are chosen or not chosen. We will then evaluate expansionary and restrictive monetary policy conditions under which these policies should be used and how they impact interest rates, investment, and aggregate demand. We close with a discussion of issues related to monetary policy and current monetary policy. Understanding interest rates is a key economic concept. For example, imagine a man who is beginning a new career working for an investment firm. He doesn't have a business background, but he was a salesman. One evening, as he was discussing his new career with an economist friend, he told his friend that the reason his firm could offer investors a much higher return than the banks was because his firm had been around for over a hundred years and therefore was considered safer than a bank and didn't have to purchase insurance to safeguard depositors' funds like banks did. The economist stopped him and had to explain to him that actually it was the opposite. His firm had to pay a higher interest rate to investors to compensate the investors for their increased risk with his firm because their investments were not insured. People hold money for many different reasons. One reason is that it is convenient to have money available to purchase necessary goods and services. This is referred to as the transaction demand, or DT. The larger the value of all goods and services exchanged in the economy, the larger the amount of money that will be needed to handle all the transactions. The second reason for holding money is the asset demand, or DA. People like to hold some of their financial assets as money because money is the most liquid of all financial assets. If an emergency arises where you need funds in a hurry, you have access to those funds quickly. The disadvantage to holding money as an asset is that it is a non-productive asset. If you bury a pile of money in the backyard, when you dig it up 10 years later, it will be the same amount that you buried. And 10 years later, the purchasing power of the money has probably declined. The amount of money demanded as an asset is inversely related to the interest rates, meaning as interest rates go up, the demand for money as an asset goes down, and vice versa. The total demand for money is the sum of the transactions demand for money plus the asset demand for money. The transactions demand for money is assumed to be vertical as it depends on GDP rather than the interest rate. The asset demand for money is inversely related to the interest rate, meaning as interest rates go up, the amount of money demanded goes down. When we introduce the supply of money into the graphs, we find an equilibrium for point for money. Just like in other resource markets, there's an equilibrium interest rate that will cause the supply of money available to equal the demand for money. This rate can be thought of as the market-determined price that borrowers must pay for using someone else's money over some period of time. It's important to note that interest rates and bond prices are inversely related, and we'll cover this more in depth in class. Just like any other organization, the Federal Reserve Bank's balance sheet reports the assets and liabilities of the organization as of that point in time. The Fed's balance sheet helps us to consider how the Fed conducts monetary policy. The two main assets of the Federal Reserve Banks are securities and loans to commercial banks. The securities are government bonds that have been purchased by the Federal Reserve Bank to increase the supply of money in the economy. Loans to commercial banks also help the banks to increase their reserves. The liabilities of the Federal Reserve Banks have three noteworthy items. The reserves of commercial banks represent the required reserves that banks must hold to ensure their stability. These reserves are also listed as assets on the bank's books. The Treasury deposits represents the amount of money the U.S. government has on deposit with the Fed. The government uses the money to pay its obligations. The Federal Reserve notes outstanding represents the su supply of paper money currently circulating outside of the Federal Reserve banks. 
Over the past couple of years, the balance sheet of the Fed has increased dramatically as the Fed has taken various actions to help the economy recover from the recession.